Hi everyone, it's Dr. Z. Welcome to another episode of Next Up Narcissism. Today's episode, we are talking about the one after you. That's right. We are talking about the next boyfriends or the next girlfriends that the narcissist is with after you. We're going to talk about what that looks like, how you can manage it, some skills and strategies to navigate it, and how to live your best life. Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Z. Welcome to another episode of Next Up Narcissism. Today, we are talking about the one after you. What do I mean by that? Exactly what it says. What happens and how do you manage and heal when you are no longer with your narcissistic ex, whether that is because they ended things with you or you ended things with them? We're going to discuss the relationship that they have immediately after. Because one of the things that I find with several of my patients, is that there's this fear as irrational as they may know it is but there is this fear that this new person is going to get this idealized version of your ex meaning they're going to get the ex that you constantly tried the entire relationship to get back and that was the person who was love bombing you from the beginning of the relationship. That's really what you were chasing the entire relationship was to get that back. What can you do to get that back? And sometimes it will be dangled in front of you and then it will be taken away. You never knew when it was going to show up because there was no rhyme or reason. And that's one of the things that kept you so locked into this toxic dynamic, right? We talk about that intermittent reinforcement. You never know under what conditions they're going to be nice to you again, or loving to you or doting on you. So it's a very normal fear that you think they may be better, healthier, nicer, kinder, more loving with this new person than they ever were with you. And I understand that fear is so real, but it's so never gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. And also, if you notice, we have a new background today. Um, I am using a different place right now to do my podcast, but if you are watching on YouTube, yes, you are in the right spot. It's just gonna look a little bit different today. Um, so, okay, so let's let's get into this. Let's say, for whatever reason, the two of you broke up. Doesn't matter how you broke up, but you broke up. And we know that part of a narcissist breakup process involves character assassination. What does that mean? They are going to attempt to ruin your reputation, ruin your credibility, tell stories about you, tell everybody you were crazy, tell everybody you're the reason for the breakup, make themselves look like a victim. And because they've had their flying monkeys the entire time, these are the people that they're going to tell, right? Um, maybe they'll write an email to your parents, or maybe they will tell your friends, or whatever the case may be. But they're going to make sure that they smear your character. Now, are they doing that because they hate you and they want revenge? No, no. I mean, who knows if they hate you or not? It doesn't even matter. But the function, there I go with the function, the function of the character assassination is solely so that your credibility is ruined if you should talk about the abuse that you endured. That nobody will listen to you, nobody will believe you because you're the crazy one, okay? Because they planted this seed. And the other reason they do it is because they want to make sure that they come out of this relationship unscathed, that they look like the victim so that they can get that attention and that um, empathy and pity even. Anything, anything is fuel for them. Anything. And they need that to live on. So if they don't, if they're not 
with you, they need some source of fuel. Now, here's the part where I'm going to make a very general blanket statement. Not all the times, but many, most of the times. A narcissist will never end their primary relationship. And you can understand why I'm saying primary. A narcissist will never end their primary relationship unless they have a secondary, tertiary in the wings. Okay. So what often happens is when, when, you, when you're not a narcissist, right, and you get out of a really unhealthy, dysfunctional relationship, most people, they need a break. <laughs> they just need their heads to rest. They don't want to get involved in anything else. They just want to be alone. <laughs> and that's healthy, right? That's healthy. They don't want to jump into another relationship. And in fact, I tell people, don't jump into another relationship. Give yourself time to rest, to breathe. You need time to regulate your nervous system, which has completely been shot for God knows how long. So you need time. The narcissist can't afford to have alone time. Why? Because a narcissist basically does not exist unless they have people in their orbit giving them supply. That's their, that's their, their, their lifeline, right? And without that, they don't exist. So if they break up with you or you break up with them, they're never going to be alone, which is why, for a couple of reasons, why there's a lot of infidelity. But one of the reasons is that they need backup. They need somebody in the wings should you leave or they leave you. They need somebody. So it's more likely than not that the narcissist had other people and I'm talking about men and women here, okay? Because women can be narcissists as well, and we know that. So this is for men and women. Um, there's majority of the time going to be other people, okay? That they're getting emotional attention from, sexual attention from, even financial attention from something. So you're going to hear pretty quickly that they have moved on that they're with somebody else, that they're dating somebody else already. And it's gonna seem like it's so out of the blue, but chances are they've already formed a relationship with this person well before your relationship with them ended, okay? Now, remember, they play the victim. So this person that they're with absolutely views them as the unhappy one in the relationship, uh, the victim in the relationship as a way to not have them look so bad that they jumped right into another relationship with somebody else. Makes sense, right? Oh, well, they've been unhappy for so long. So they're just trying to figure out how to be happy. They deserve this, right? So it kind of justifies them jumping into a new relationship and still continues that victim narrative for them. So they're with somebody else. You, understandably so, are extremely pissed off you're extremely upset, maybe even devastated. You just had your entire sense of self ripped out and shredded. You don't even know what your interests are. You don't even know what your favorite color is. And here's your ex already with somebody else. It's soul crushing. And so now you are confused, you're angry, you're sad, you're, you feel manipulated, you feel used, you feel dirty, you feel all the things, all the things, even if you know this wasn't your fault. You've been gaslit for so long that you're going to look at this person with the new relationship and say, well, I, maybe it was me because look how fast they got into something else. They must not have been happy for so long. So here's what I need you to remember. Somebody who is a narcissist is a narcissist always in every domain, in every aspect of their world. They are not just a narcissist with you. They are not just a narcissist with their children. It may appear that they're charming and they're philanthropic and they're um, the life of the party to everybody else, but that's a facade, just like the love bombing version of them was a facade. That's not who they are. Who they are is what you saw behind closed doors. So you need to understand that even if 
they are acting so loving and so doting and, and just everything you've ever wanted with them to this new person, understand that that too is the facade. That is not them. I understand that it's really difficult to watch this happen, which is where the no contact comes in, which we'll get to in a little bit. So how do you find out that your ex is with somebody else pretty quickly? And probably somebody that you've recognized or you've seen the name pop up on their phone and it's not the biggest shock to you. Let's say it's been a person that's come up in arguments between the two of you. You had this weird feeling that they were together, or whatever the case may be. So here's why. They are going to do everything they possibly can to make it known to you, short of flying a plane with a banner on it over your house. They are going to use every means necessary to show you and have you find out that they are with somebody else. And they're going to sell the narrative that they are, quote, finally happy, that they've finally found their soulmate, that they've, they've been waiting for this person forever. Now, and the reason function, the function of that is two, twofold. One, to get the new person to think that this is true love, it's unique, and suck them in and make them feel vulnerable and make them trust them and all the love bombing, right? But for you, the function of them doing that, if you hear that they've finally found the one and you're thinking, I just gave you 20 years of my life. I gave up my career. I gave up friends. I gave up family. I don't even know who the hell I am anymore. I was abused. I was, you know, made to think I was nothing. And now you're saying you finally found your one? I mean, that's soul crushing, right? But the reason why they're saying it is because they want you to feel all the things I just said. They are doing what they can to make you feel totally irrelevant. Almost as if the relationship for the last one year, two years, five years, 20 years, 50 years, meant absolutely nothing and pretty much didn't even exist. They want you to feel that way. Because remember, you don't even exist to the narcissist unless they need you for something or they can get something from you in that moment. Otherwise, you're irrelevant. And so because they're no longer in that space with you at that moment, you're irrelevant. They want you to feel that. They want you to feel that all of that energy, emotional, psychological energy you have spent and wasted on them meant nothing, that you exhausted yourself and they don't care. They've moved on, they found their one, you're irrelevant. I have patients that get, so, and again, understandably so, the angriest they probably have ever been in their life hearing that. They think of all the abuse, the sacrifice, the years they think they've given up of their life only to be told, I found my one. Even though you don't want that, that's not the point. So you're gonna hear things like that, but remember, don't ever listen to the words that a narcissist says. Don't ever respond to the words the narcissist says. Always respond to the function. And the function of this is to gain control and power over you when you're not physically present be able to gain and control, gain access to and control your emotions by making you feel irrelevant, insignificant, and just bad. That's the function. So if you know that's why they're doing it, your response to it is gonna look very different. Your response to it is gonna be not to pay it any attention because you don't wanna give them that satisfaction. Now, the other thing that's gonna happen is they're going to plaster this all over social media. You are going to very quickly see pictures of them somehow. Someone's going to send it to you. You're going to see it. It'll pop up on your feed. People you may know. Chances are the person that they're with is going to put a picture up because remember, in their mind, they've been with this person probably for a lot longer than you think. This person's been feeding them lies. I'm so unhappy in my current relationship. I can't wait to be with you. So to this new person, who is really innocent in this, has no idea what's about to happen to them, 
they think they hit the jackpot and they've been with this person for a while in their mind. So they're going to post it too, right? We'll see that they'll, they'll post pictures of themselves at the restaurant that you always went to with them or at a vacation spot that you always went to with them. They'll be buying them the same gifts that they would buy you. And they're going to put it all over social media because they want you to see it. I say because the narcissist wants you to see it. Now, because the narcissist has made themselves out to be a victim, has assassinated your character to make you look like the bad one and the crazy one, people are going to see them with their new person, their new partner, and think, oh, you know what? They deserve to be happy. I'm so glad they found somebody. Look how amazing they are. Look how nice and caring they are to this new person. They can't be the bad one. It has to be their ex. This is so orchestrated and so well planned. And I'm telling you this because when this happens or should this happen or if it already happened, if you look at it as a well orchestrated plot and you look at the function of the narcissist behavior, not their words and not the superficial part that, that, that everybody's seeing, but you focus on that, that underlying reason why they're doing it, you feel way more empowered and feel way more control over how to manage the situation. Now, understand, I'm not saying you're not going to be hurt and furious. Of course, you are. You're human and you just want the help. But what I am saying is that you realize now it had nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with this new person. It never did and it never will. So, okay, so it's, it's all over social media. They're with the parents. Everybody's parents are meeting. Three months later, they move in. Six months later, they're engaged. <laughs> and again, everybody's like, oh, they finally found their, I'm so happy for them. They were so unhappy in the old relationship. And now they finally found their soulmate and there's pictures everywhere and the wedding and they're getting married on your anniversary date or they're getting married on your birthday or they're getting married on one of your kids' birthdays or something, or they're getting married at a place that you always used to go to. Something like that will happen. And you have to watch this. Now, this is where the no contact comes in. I always recommend block them on social media. There's no need. Block them, block their family, block their friends, block anybody that is going to make you uncomfortable, even if indirectly. Okay? So that's going to be extremely important. So even if indirectly. So you're going to block family, block friends, even if it's unintentional on their part. Remove everybody from your phone, from social media that is going to make you uncomfortable. You don't need it, and it's okay. Now, here's the other thing to keep in mind. Like social media for everybody, everybody always puts their best life on social media. If you think about your own relationship, you definitely did it as well, right? But behind closed doors, it was, it was hell. I mean, I don't post a picture of, you know, my kids spilling red liquid all over a carpet. Why would I post that? No, I'm going to post a cute picture of us at lunch together. <laughs> um, but I didn't post the picture of them dropping their pasta all over their shirt and my bag. <laughs> That's that, that doesn't go on Instagram. Um, but the cute smiling picture does. So remember, they're only posting their best life, okay? So that's all you're seeing. You have to remember that as well. So you never know what is going on behind closed doors in that relationship. And let me tell you something. Once they've moved in together or once they've been together for a while or once they're engaged or once they get married, whatever the case may be, there is zero doubt in my mind, and there is zero chance if this is a narcissist, that that abuse isn't going to continue. And it's so unbelievably unfortunate that that cycle continues. But I'm telling you this because the person after you is no different. They view people as objects. It is their new shiny object. And when that object is no longer appealing, then they collect additional objects, other people in the wings to get that supply and that attention from. What happens in your relationship was not your fault. 
It was not because of you. It was never because of you. The person they're with now is getting the love bombing stage. They're getting that amazing idealized version. They're getting the fairy tale until they don't. And they won't. I'm telling you. Remember, coercive control, narcissistic abuse functions in a cyclical pattern. It's a cycle. And cycles start, go through, and end, and start again. <laughs> That's how cycles work. This isn't a progression. It's a cycle. And this new person is just one more person stuck in that cycle. They just don't know it yet, just like you didn't know it yet. Now, I know people are thinking, well, should I call them? Should I warn them? Should I, should I send an anonymous email? I've had people do this, but here's, here's what I'm going to recommend. Don't do it. Here's why. If somebody had done that to you during the, the love bombing phase, during the honeymoon phase, when they were amazing and you couldn't believe you had somebody this wonderful, there's no way you would have believed it. And it was probably coming from somebody who at the time your significant other said was crazy and played the victim role. So if you get an email or a text or a phone call from their ex saying how horrible this person is, but you're in the love bombing phase and this person, cause why would they lie, has described them as crazy, there's no way in hell you're gonna believe that. You're gonna think they're the jealous, crazy ex, right? And you're gonna give it no attention. None. You're probably going to laugh about it, right? That is exactly what will happen again. And so they're really, and, and here's the other reason why I wouldn't suggest doing it, not just because that you won't be believed, but it's more supply for your ex. There is nothing more appealing to the narcissistic ex than you contacting their current girlfriend or boyfriend. That's like their dream situation because now they know they have control over you still. They still have control over your emotions. They still can get under your skin. You're interfering now in the relationship. So now their current person that they're with is now arguing with you and it, it just causes chaos while the narcissist just sits in the middle of the chaos and doesn't need to move. And everybody around them is fighting like cats and dogs. There's, there's, there's literally no movement from the narcissist. They're just there. And everybody around them is arguing you with the girlfriend and the friends get involved in it. And they're just sitting there and they love it. Do not under any circumstances contact the new, the new spy, the new girlfriend, the new boyfriend. Um, back to the abuse being cyclical. This is really important because when you see them with this new person and, and they seem in love and blah, blah, blah. Remember, this new person is also going through the abuse cycle and they're in the first stage. They're in the love bombing. If you remember the love bombing stage, you're going to know. And this was the person you always were striving to get back. If you could just do this different or if this could just change, then you'd get them back to where they were in the beginning and they'd purposely and deliberately sprinkle, right? We talk about breadcrumbing, sprinkle these little crumbs of hope that maybe, just maybe, they'll go back to who they used to be, all right? But that is never going to happen. They're never going to be that person because that was never them to begin with. And that's probably one of the most traumatizing things when I work with people. The, the, the one, the awareness, but to actually accept the fact that the person you met never existed in the beginning, it, it shakes you to your core. It literally pulls the, the, the rug out from under you. It, it, it blows your world up. Your, le your ability to trust people is, is, is shot. You're, you're so cautious now. You, you've been robbed of your comfort of being vulnerable, right? Like you can't trust anybody now. That's how you feel. I mean, you can, and that's what you work on. But this is, this is what you're thinking. So the love bombing stage 
is what you always were trying to get back. And so this is what you see with the new, the new person. They're in this love bombing stage and it's, it's killing you. It's torturing you. You have to remember it is part of a cyclical pattern. And it is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when the next stage of the cycle starts. When the mask starts to fall off, when the abuse starts to come. And remember, the abuse isn't this quick onset. It's this slow, insidious, like a leaky faucet, right? I say this all the time to you guys. It's like a leaky faucet dripping. And you don't really pay much attention to it. It's just something that's there and you know it's broken and you know it's annoying, but eh, you'll just let it go. And then before you know it, you're standing in the middle of your kitchen and there's water up to your knees saying, how the hell did I get here? And now your house is ruined. And so it's kind of like that. That abuse is not going to be this huge onset all of a sudden. It's going to be slow. It's going to be deliberate. It's going to be calculated. Um, but I, I promise you, it's not a matter of if, it's, it's, it's when. And it's going to happen and you will not know that it happened for the same reason that the majority of people in your life had no idea what was going on behind closed doors until you told them if you could even figure out how to explain to them what was going on. So this is what's happening now. You'll never know with the new relationship. You'll never know when this starts. You'll, you'll have no idea because all you're going to say is what they want you to see, which is the social media pics, the happy, the going on vacations, the this, the that, all the good stuff. That's all you're going to say. So remember, it is cyclical. It's it's going to happen. Who they are with them in the beginning doesn't exist, just like it didn't exist with you. And their real self will come out. Even though at first glance, it seems like, even at first glance, it seems like they are unbelievably happy. And so it must have been you. It must have been your fault. But it's not. Now, here's the other thing that happens that I want to make sure that I touch on because we don't talk about this a lot. And I think it's really important, usually, and not all the time, but usually in healthy relationships or, or even toxic ones that aren't with a narcissist, right? Because there's plenty of toxic relationships that doesn't mean you're with a narcissist. But in narcissistic, sorry, in non narcissistic relationships, even toxic ones, when a breakup happens, pretty, pretty, it's pretty often that you don't get back together. Like maybe you touch base here and there on a birthday or wish each other, you know, Merry Christmas or Happy New Year. Maybe you flirt again for a little bit, but like you really most don't get back together. And if they do, it's usually short lived, but, but most do not go back together after they've broken up. Even if the breakup is this like long process, they usually do not get back together. With a narcissist, however, they will more likely than not come back. And when I say come back, I don't mean they have changed their ways. They are a new person. They are no longer abusive and they want to be with you and they want to show you that they can give you a healthy relationship. That is not what I mean by come back. Now, they may tell you all that. That's great. But that's not what happened. Somebody who has narcissistic personalities, or let me just put this out there first. And I know people don't like to hear this, but I'm going to say it anyway. The likelihood of them making any substantial or meaningful changes is extremely low. Very, very low. And even if they're working with the best and brightest expert in narcissistic abuse, the change they're going to make is going to be so small and probably really only in session until they leave the office where they're doing it to make the therapist think that they're, you know, that they're changing. And no, no. And that's even if they go get help, which they don't. They'll go to therapy and then they never go back because either the therapist sees through their bullshit or they charm the therapist and it just doesn't ever work. So they're going to come back having not changed at all. I'm going to make that blanket statement. They're exactly the same. But what you're going to see is that love bombing stage again. They're going to try to sell you and hook you in on that person you have been trying to get back the entire relationship. Okay. And this is called hoovering, right? We talk about this. Now, hoovering also doesn't have to be a loving 
you know, a fake loving impression. It doesn't have to be them trying to win you back. Hoovering is just coming back into your structured life to fuck it up, to make sure that they still have access to you, even if it's been two years, to make sure that they can still be responsible for messing with your thoughts and your emotions. If you're going to be happy, they want to be the one that's ma- that makes you feel that way. If, they're, if you're going to be sad, they want to be the one that made you sad. And so what you'll find is, who knows, on your birthday, anniversary date, they hear someone died in your family, or they saw a dog that made them think of your dog. You name it, they'll say it. But they're going to, at some point, contact you. And the point of it is to see if they still have access to your world, to your brain, to your emotions, to your thoughts. And it could also be them starting an argument with you. Because remember, I said it doesn't matter what emotion as long as they know they have access to you. They could call you and accuse you of emailing their girlfriends or boyfriend, even though you never did, just because they want to start a fight with you, just because it's your birthday. So be very mindful of when the hoovering happens. What's going on? Did you just get a job promotion? Do they know that um, it's your favorite holiday? Do they know that it's your birthday? Like, what is it that's going on that they picked that day? Remember, I talked about function, not what they're saying. Don't focus on, I can't believe after everything you've done, you're actually calling to wish me a happy birthday. Like, what is wrong with you? That's focusing on the words. That's not what I want you to do. Get you nowhere. What I want you to do is focus on the function. Why on this day, at this time, did they text me happy birthday? And then you realize, oh my God, wait, this is the day we met. This is our anniversary. Oh, they're trying to get me upset. This has nothing to do with my birthday. Now that is much more empowering. You're responding to the function. And now how would you respond to that function? Nothing. You wouldn't give them anything because you don't want to give them the satisfaction that they've made you feel a certain way. You don't want to give them the satisfaction that they have gained access to you. So you don't respond. That's the difference between responding to words and function with a narcissist. So hoovering can look like starting an argument with you or um, just accidentally showing up at a bar that they know that you always go to Fridays at five o'clock. Oh, what are you doing here? Right. So all of these things are hoovering attempts. And it's extremely important that you acknowledge that it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when they're going to come back into your life in some capacity. Okay. And have some structured, templated ideas of how you're going to respond. Now, hopefully you have blocked them. You've cut all means of contact, but narcissists are sneaky. They'll figure out a way to get in touch with you. So Do your best to avoid contact, obviously, but if they contact you and they try to hoover you back, make sure that you have some sort of stock response available. Either don't respond, or if you feel that you have to respond, which I don't recommend, but if you feel you have to respond, it is not an ongoing conversation. It's just, thank you. That's it. And then you do not respond again. That is absolutely it. Okay. But again, if we're going to respond to function, the response would be not responding to them at all not giving them that satisfaction because it has nothing to do with your birthday. That's just, that's just the avenue they took to see if they have access to you. Um, so you need to be careful of the hoovering. That's extremely important. Um, and it will happen. Okay. But be strong. And I guarantee you that if they are making hoovering attempts with you, they're making these attempts with so many other people. So in a weird way, take comfort in that, knowing that you're not the only one that's dealing with this. You're not alone. They're doing this to other people. Okay. So I want you, I want you to keep that in mind. Um, I know it's a weird comfort, but there, there's something to be said for not feeling alone. Uh, and eventually when you hear the relationship with the new person goes south, even if they don't break up, but you know that it's bad. I mean, you've gotten out of it right? You don't have to deal with that anymore. You have gotten stronger. You are more empowered. And you look at the relationship now from the outside and you can put some space between you and the relationship and you and the abuse. And the best form of response to a narcissist is to live your absolute best life. 
that does not involve them whatsoever. There is nothing more harmful and hurtful to a narcissist than seeing somebody that used to be, quote, in their orbit, seeing somebody that they can no longer control, who is doing well, who is successful in life. And I don't mean even mean financially, I just mean doing things they value and love. To see that person happy and confident and not the shell of the human being that they had been before because of the narcissist, that absolutely destroys the narcissist because now they realize they have no control over you anymore. And if they don't have access to you and they can't get that supply from you anymore, oh, that, that, that kills them. So the best way to manage a narcissist, manage the hoovering is live your best life. Do it however you can, but live your best life. That's all I have. Uh, I hope that was helpful. And I will see everybody next time on Next Up Narcissism. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Next Up Narcissism. I hope you found it useful, but most importantly, I hope you found it validating. Want to work one-on-one with me? Visit my website at drjamiezuckerman.com to book a personalized coaching session and be sure to check out my on-demand workshops on topics like co-parenting with a narcissist, life after leaving, anxiety management strategies, and more. Again, that's drjamiezuckerman.com. You'll also find links to my interactive workbooks, merchandise, resources, and newsletter sign up. Next Up Narcissism is as much your podcast as it is mine. I want to hear your feedback and what you want to hear. So make sure to leave a podcast review wherever you listen or send an email to nextup at drjamiezuckerman.com. Again, that's nextup at drjamiezuckerman.com. Be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And as always, thank you so much for listening. Make sure to tune in next week to see what's up next on Next Up Narcissism.